Hi, today we are going to be working on a hello world type of application for JavaScript. And we're going to approach JavaScript through two avenues. One is Node, Node.js, which is a Node script runner and allows us to work on the command line. Uh, you'll be using Node and NPM a lot more when working with frameworks or if you get into full stack development. But we're going to use it with JavaScript in the beginning because it's a way to keep the code really clear and, you know, it's kind of like running a Python script when you use Node to run JavaScript. So it gives us a clear look at that. We're also going to be using a JavaScript in the browser. And so in this exercise, we'll be hooking up two different, um, two different types of code, one that will be browser and one that will be node. And the cal say is we're going to, instead of just us having the computer say hello world, we're going to use a module um, from NPM that's called cal say that will let a cow say hello world. And then in the browser we'll just write some code um, using HTML uh, to uh, make it look like a cow is saying hello. So um, the main things to get out of this are uh, hooking up uh, your code, so being able to hook up a module to Node and being able to hook up JavaScript to an HTML file, and then also getting Node installed, so that's part of what you'll be doing. Uh, and we'll be using it in a couple of more uh, modules for this course. Uh, and then um, also just kind of allowing yourself to maybe play around with what you see in your final uh, final work here. Um, and what you'll be turning in is a couple of screenshots uh, that show your work completed. So let's get going with this. If you take a look at this um, readme, it gives you all of the instructions that you need to work on this and, and turn it in. Uh, and of course, the first thing that you're going to want to do is to uh, fork this repository and clone it to your local projects directory. So let's work on that. And so I'll just get this fork going and I'll join you in a couple of minutes. All right, so I forked this. You can see it's coming from SU Web Dev and it's in my private repository, my private account. Um, just a couple things now. You can see right here there is a link because we are creating and index.html, um, you can view this. So it's not going to be fully functional until we do some work on it. But you can see we have a little web page that you can enter a cow message. And if I say hello world, actually nothing happens because it's not hooked up. But this will be the browser part of what we'll be hooking up. Before we get any deeper, though, let's go ahead and clone this. So I'm going to use SSH. I'm going to copy that address and I have set up a projects directory here um, print working directory shows me I'm in 3020 video so I'm going to go ahead and clone this and then I will use code VS code to open this up so it's in my path and I can just open that up so now we're ready to begin working on this all right, so let's open up this package readme, and we'll, we can open it in preview and have a better look at it. Um, so we have a little description of Node and browser versus Node. We're going to actually learn both. Um, and the first thing that you need to do before you can work on this is to do a Node install. And we have a link here to that, which is uh, just should be a local directory here for node. Yeah, so that link just opened up this local install node markdown. And this gives you instructions on installing for Mac and Windows. So if you are on Windows, you can just go to this Node.js download page and pick up the 64-bit installer, run it, and it should install it just fine. Uh, for the Mac, you probably want to use Brew, so you would first install Homebrew, and this is a Mac package manager. And we're talking about package managers today, so 
uh, Max benefit from using this homebrew because it keeps them from having issues with permissions when trying to run global code. So um, once you get the code installed, then you can check it by going to your command line, um, which you can do in Visual Studio Code once you, you know, if you're all set up for this by just hitting Control Tick, and then you should be able to um, do the version check. Now I'm at 11.8. You may be at a greater version. This depends. You know, they continually are updating it, and um, and then npm dash dash version. So Node is the script runner, npm is the package manager. So just like Max have brew for a package manager, Node has a package manager. And what it does is it can download code from a Node repository called npmjs.org. This is a giant repository. It has all of the JavaScript code, pretty much I think every major company if you talk about React, if you've heard of that, or if you've heard of Angular, um, all of this code is stored for JavaScript in NPM and is accessible using the um, NPM command that you get with Node. And we will be using Calse, which is our, um, this is going to be the one of the libraries that we use to do our Hello World. And you can read about that here, and you can even look at what the options do. We're not going to use all of them in this video, but you can certainly play around with them. So let's get back in here. So once you've got Node installed, we're going to want to go back to the README. And um, we're ready now to, um, we've got Node installed, to run the npm install. So. If you look down here after forking npm install, and what that does is, uh, if you look at this package JSON, it reads this package JSON file, and it looks at any dependencies. And so the dependency that we have is on Calse, and that just tells your npm command to go out to npmjs.org and download the Calse. So let's go ahead and run that. So npm install. We don't have to give it any arguments. We just Tell it to install. And you can see here it created this node modules directory. Um, and the node modules directory is in, um, we have a get ignore file, which says, you know, whatever we put in get ignore node modules, we're not going to check into, we're not going to check that into GitHub. It's, a, it's usually a lot of code, and you don't need to check it in because you can always run npm install to get it. So, um, but if you check out this node modules directory, you can see that that single calse actually required some other libraries, and npm took care of bringing them all in. So the actual calse folder is here, and, but we had to bring in a lot of libraries. So that's the nature of working with JavaScript. There is a lot of code involved, and having it modular makes it a lot easier to uh, organize and work with. Okay, so we've got npm install run, and we can tell because we got our node modules, and you can see it gives you a message that it, it worked with zero vulnerabilities. All right, the next step is we are going to use a script tag in the HTML to make the main, the JS main available to it. So let's look at that. So this should look for HTML, CSS developers, familiar. We have a CSS folder, so we have a little bit of styling provided here. Uh, and then we have a JS folder, so that's the JavaScript, and we have a main JS. And we're going to be learning about coding in the browser like this um, in a few modules. But for now, it's provided for us um, some event handling so that when we click on something, it can run some code um, to modify our DOM. Um, so those are provided, um, and then we have an index.html, which is titled Calse, and this is what we were bringing up earlier. And so with this, we're just printing out a cow, and we've got a little uh, ID here to display output, so when we process whatever the user enters, we can display it here. And this is a lot about what JavaScript is about, it's about listening for user events, and then modifying the DOM dynamically. 
Um, so that is ready to go, but we have to-dos. So if you look back at this readme, what we're interested in here now is um, finding these to-dos and then, so we have some to-dos and we want to fix those. One way you can find all the to-dos is to go to the global search here and just look up to-do. And this shows us that we're going to be fixing a to-do here in index and we'll be doing a couple of to-dos in the index.js. Um, so first thing we, we want to make this, this um, main JS available to our HTML so we can actually just grab this script tag and actually we need a closing tag on that too. So we're going to put our script tag in place of the to-do and then we will call it script, close it off. So that makes our script tag. Um, and at this point our index.html should be working for us. So if we open that with live server and now we say hello world, boom, we see it changing our, our DOM, we see it changing the content. And whatever we type in here is going to end up in here. Um, and so then we, our assignment calls for us to use hello world and we get the moo hello world and then take a screenshot. So I am here on a Mac. I'm just going to do the com command shift of four to do this screenshot. Um, and then uh, if you're on Windows, you might want to use snippet or use one of the Chrome extensions. So this created a screenshot for me and then all I need to do is go find it. So for me it'll be on the desktop and I'm just going to label it uh, uh, HTML cal say hello and then I'll copy that into my projects. So I'm going to go to projects 3020 Got lots of things in there. Video. So this is where I'm working. And there's a screenshots directory and paste. So that's what I'm going to be doing to demonstrate using my browser. Um, you can do some stretch work on that because you can style this. You can change the button color. You can change what it says. You can, you know, do styling. You can do. Um, at this point, you could, if you if you know any JavaScript, you can even take a look at the JavaScript and see about um, tinkering with that too. So that would be looking at main. So right now it just says moo, whatever you can modify what's in this inner HTML. But that's going a little ahead of where we're at. All right, so we've worked with the browser part of this code. And just to refresh you on what we've done, we have this index HTML, and it is picking up um, the CSS and now we've added uh, some script HTML script tag so that it can pick up the main JS. So our browser code is in the JS main JS file. Okay. Um, now what we want to do is to look at uh, getting our node JS to run. And so that code is in the root index JS and this code will not be run in the browser, it will be run from the command line. And so it picks up arguments from the command line and then it will use the cowsay library to um, produce a cow on the command line that was saying something. And what it, the argument, so our, if you think about, you're going to be learning about parameters with functions, arguments are optional data that you pass into the command line. So let's just see how this works. And if you look back at the readme where we're at here, we are now going to use the common JS, which is what's used in Node, um, to bring in um, the, these libraries from that we downloaded from NPM. We also have a local little bit of code here, a local module in this modules directory called getargs. And getargs is 
is a folder and we have an index.js and we don't have to do anything to this but this is the code that is used to pull arguments out of a command line and it just pulls the first one so no worries about understanding how that all works we're going to get into more of that but just we now need to import that git args and we also need to import calsay um, and using common js we can do that so if you look here you can see that we can we use the require command to bring in calsay and we just use the name as it is given in npmjs.org which is just calsay we don't give a directory um, it's the same name that's in the package.json but for bringing in this local module we are going to use a little uh, relative path to get from our index.js which is in the root down into the get args module. We don't have to, we could say dat slash index.js, but in common JS, it always assumes, unless you say otherwise, that it to look for the index.js in whatever folder you specify. So I'm just giving it the folder get args. That's enough for it to find the index.js. Kind of like how the web, the, when you go to the browser, you don't have to type in index.html. It assumes to look for that on your server, uh, node looks for index.js. So all we really have to do now is we can copy these two and get these into our index.js. And at this point, we should be able to run our code on the command line. So to run a node command, all we need to do is say node so we just type in the word node that's just saying run node and then we tell it the name of the script which is index.js and then we want to have an argument here because we're picking up this text argument and we want it to be hello world this is just what we've specified in the instructions and so what you see is a little hello world printed out there and you have your cow um, and if you look at this code that cow say takes in the options it takes in your text and that's what gets put out from the cow speaking and then there is an eyes option and you see how those come out as the eyes and a tongue option and that comes out as the tongue and so you can change those and see what that looks like but for the purposes of this assignment we just want to get a screenshot of this output so if I grab this and again I'm using command shift 4 and on the Mac and take a picture of it that will get me my picture and then I'm going to go to the finder and this is going to be the node I'll say hello and I'll just copy that and get it into my screenshots directory so video and screenshots okay so that looks good um, if you wanted to play around with this working on the command line if you don't have a space you can just say hello it will pick that up but if you have multiple if you have spaces in your text you're going to need to put quotes around it but whatever you put in there, you know, this is a great day. It's going to end up in what the cow says. And if you change, you know, the tongue, this is going to change what you see for the tongue. So you can play around with that. But all that's really required is that you um, put those two screenshots just to see that you were able to accomplish this. Okay, so now that we've got both the HTML and the node CLI, so CLI is short command line interface. We've got both of those working. We are ready to push to the master branch and then deploy it so that we can pick up two URLs to turn in. And so to do this, um, let's just get status. Okay, so we've modified the index HTML, index JS. We've added a couple of images. So we'll git add git commit fulfill requirements. Git push. Okay, 
commit, git push. All right, and then we are now ready to go back out to our um, repository on our account. And we want to fix this link so that it's using a local deployed link. So let's go to settings. And in here, we will set this GH pages to the master branch. And for CSS. Um, that's only optional only if you're using a domain name like like I am with this beckypelts.me and then see if it's published. Once it's published we can open that up and just double check it. So hello world. Looks good. So now grab this in your buffer this URL to the rendered code and go back to your main code page, edit this website, make it yours, whatever you're rendering, and then you'll be turning in this URL for your code and this URL here for your rendered code. So that is the CalSA and an well, uh, introduction to working with JavaScript both in the browser and on the command line. So that completes the assignment.